Hey everybody, it is Sunday, 7 at 7, and it is time to get into what the Word of God says and get a little bit more understanding about grace and what all it means to us. Um, today I preached on uh, relentless grace, but the topic of my message was don't waste it. And Paul talked about it really a lot throughout his writings about how the, the or grace of God can be wasted or nullified or become void in your life because you don't activate it. You don't put faith to it. You don't make it something that becomes alive to you. Um, you know, uh, I read a scripture today and I've got some scriptures I'm going to read, but I want to read this. Uh, let me just find it super quick. Yeah. Verse 17 I read today in Romans 5, 17 out of the Mirror Bible. Uh, it's in the, this is in the commentary, but this is where he says, Grace is out of all proportion and superiority to the transgression. See, it's, it says, no, grace is not something you qualify for by receiving it. Grace already belongs to mankind without their permission. And then it goes on to say later, um, it says, of course, it, does, it doesn't take faith out of the equation. Because that's a part of the thing that I think people get mistaken with grace. Is they think that, well, if God's already forgiven me of my sins and done everything, then I don't have to do anything. I can just live how I want to live. Well, as he's saying right here, faith, uh, grace doesn't take faith out of the equation. He says it gives context to faith. Faith isn't what you do in order to... It's what happens to you because of. You get faith because of what you've, what you've heard that God's already done for you. So that was just a little bonus. Um, took, took, you know, first two minutes bonus material there. So surely, Ron, thanks for watching. Um, but I was going to read, I put the, in the context as well, or in the um, um, yeah, comments, uh, the scriptures I'm going to read tonight. So you can have them and you can read and meditate on them as well. But... Romans 5 verse 1 says the conclusion is clear our righteousness has absolutely nothing to do with our ability to keep moral laws and I was preaching about that this morning it is the immediate result of what Jesus accomplished on mankind's behalf this gives context to faith what we just talked about but it gives context to faith and finds expression in unhindered face-to-face -face friendship with God Jesus Christ is the head of that union. And I love the definitions, and I should be on there for you, but the definitions of that where it says face-to-face -face friendship, what that means is, uh, it, from the Greek word, uh, you can read it there, but it's, it means, when it says face-to-face, -face, that's what it means. It means literally face-to-face. -face. And then the next word where it says friendship comes from the Greek root word, which means to join or to be set at one again. In Carpenter, it's referred to as the dovetail joint, which is the strongest joint. And then the commentary says, peace is a place of unhindered enjoyment of friendship beyond guilt, beyond suspicion, beyond blame, or inferiority. We're at peace with God. God doesn't see us as inferior. He doesn't see us full of just blame or he doesn't have blame or suspicion or guilt on us we're beyond all that because of what jesus did it goes on to say in verse 2 jesus is god's face-to-face -face grace embrace of the entire human race that's hard to say fast but you get the message jesus is what grace is all about you know um grace you know what pastor and i were talking about is like you know the love of god god is love well it never says god is grace but grace is love in action. Grace is the pouring out of his love for us, that he made it available to us. And he loved us even when we weren't lovely. It goes on to say, So here we are, standing tall in this joyful bliss of our redeemed innocence. We are God's dream come true. This was God's idea all along. You know, I used to have this image of... Um, God up there angry with man and Jesus in the way between God and man being like no God you know like holding back all the wrath and fury that you saw in the Old Testament and the only thing holding it back was Jesus standing in the gap holding it back and that's not the way it was at all because 
like this says, it was God's idea all along to redeem mankind back to himself. And let me, let me go on to verse 3. says, our blissful boasting in him. This is, this, is, this is a trick. This is the key. If you're dealing with circumstances that don't line up with what you think they should, according to the word of God, if you're dealing with sickness or, um, let's just say, guilt or, suspi or um, blame or condemnation or shame or, you know, you see things in your mental health isn't right or your family's not right, not lining up right. Listen to this as our blissful boasting in him remains uninterrupted in times of trouble. This is the key. It's your praise and your thanksgiving in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of the trial. We know that pressure reveals patience. Tribulation does not have what it takes to nullify what hope knows we have. Man, hope knows we have it because we've seen it in his word and we hold on to it and tribulation doesn't have what it takes. It's not big enough. It's not strong enough. It's not powerful enough to take what I know hope has already given me. Verse 4 just says, patience provides proof of every positive expectation. I'm telling you, if I said in the text, but if you don't have a mirror Bible, I would strongly recommend downloading it and reading it. It is so good. It is so powerful. I put the scriptures on there for you. I mean, you should read those and meditate on it and think about it because to think about that you were on God's mind the whole time Jesus was on this earth. You and God doesn't see you in any way, shape, matter, or form as inferior, guilty, suspicious, blamed, anything. We are face to face with him. Uh, yeah, Ron says we have a face to face relationship with our creator, even better than what we had in the garden. You know, that's true because we, Adam walked next to God. We have God in us. He's, he's in us. He's with us. We are his children. He chose us. And then Jesus said, let me be the one. Let me get this back to the way you had it in originally uh, set up. Let me get this back to how it was supposed to be. So anyway, I just wanted to read those scriptures. That's been seven minutes. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Have a great night. You are victorious, whether you believe it or not. God's already made you that way. He's already poured out his grace, which includes victory in every situation, which includes healing, which includes um, uh, release from condemnation, no suspicion, no guilt, uh, mental stability, everything that you th can think of, any relationships that need fixing, he can fix them. Everything that you need, God has already given to you. So love you guys. God bless you. I'm going to preach longer. So um, oh, now it's eight minutes. But anyway, God bless. Have a great night. Talk to y'all later.